Well, Tuesday wrestling was not exactly what I thought it was going to be for me. As you know, normally I would review NWA Power and NXT. However, there was no NWA Power today because they actually gave three free matches from NWA 75. However, I feel it's not fair for me to do that due to the fact that I already reviewed 75 for all of you. So, I decided, you know what? I'm going to stick with NXT, but I decided let's add a little uh, review from a previous show back on the 25th of August. And this one is from the Yoshi Promotion Seedling. Uh, they were celebrating their 8th year anniversary, featuring two co-main events. The first one is the tag team titles, where of course um, Ayame Sazamura and uh, Riko Kaiju defend their tag titles against uh, Maya Yuhiki and Surumi Natsu. But the main event features, of course, uh, the Beyond the Sea Championship. Uh, Risa Nakajima defends it against Suri, or as we know her back in NXT, Saray. So I'm excited to see how this one, this is Saray's first championship uh, match since returning to Japan. But we're also going to review NXT. As you know, we still come off from Heat Wave. There's plenty. Uh, plenty of things that take place however this one features a number one contendership for the nxt women's title to take on tiffany strand the following week but also we have the steel cage match where the creed brothers fight for their lives to get reinstated if they defeat the dyad but the idea is to ensure schism does not get involved so we'll see what happens until then but also we have some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as uh, what events the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, any signed wrestler, injured wrestlers, or anything else. The whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of The Leader of Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay Roddy here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. We review a lot of pro wrestling shows from the many promotions I might have mentioned. And of course, uh, we do some other stuff such as discussions, um, anything else. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us. You'll be getting a lot of reviews daily from this channel. And if you like this episode, please give us a like in the bottom or leave us a nice, very comment in the bottom too. So let's begin with our very first review. This is from our promotion, Yoshi promotion down in Japan, Seedling, uh, celebrating their 8th anniversary. This particular show took place in Corkin Hall uh, on August uh, 25th, 2023. Now, this particular show features, of course, former NXT uh, star Saray, who went back to Japan and retake her name as Sari. So, this will be her first championship match since returning to Japan. Now, I know she has been in this promotion before for a short amount of time. The promotion she was originally from was with World Woman Pro Wrestling Diana, or as we just simply know it, Diana. But she hasn't been there since then. But, of course, she decided not to participate in any of their shows to pave way to a new generation of an ace to take over. But, however, let's get started with the, the entirety of the show. Um, it opened up with tag team action. We got Yu versus Lady Destroya, um, Hiroyo Matsumoto taking on Miyuki Takase and Aniki Ryo Mizunami. So... You probably think there was going to be a lot of good uh, action with this. I mean, there was a powerhouses between both Mizunami and Matsumoto. I thought it was pretty good. But however, X-Factor, you got to remember, you got 
you who is a big strong girl you know she is going to pound you no matter what that's exactly who she is but unfortunately it was of course um Mats Matsumoto with a I don't know if it was like a T-bone suplex that she applied on Takase to pick up the win I thought it was a very impressive win so yeah so it was the power of my Lady Destroyer to pick up the win now our next match is a very interesting one this one is called High Speed Mask versus Loser Wears um, a Mask now I don't know much of the particulars of this whole story but from my understanding one of the competitor, one of the competitors' name, uh, you may have know her, um, Kake, uh, Kakeru Sekiguchi, have begun to have a little problem with this wrestler named La Pedida, uh, who in reality is of course um, Kao Kobayashi underneath the mask. Uh, she basically ha uh, does not like her wearing her mask or whatever the scenario is. So, however, they decided to have a match called the High Speed Mask versus Loser Wear the Mask. So basically. I don't know if the, the idea is if Pedita loses, she takes off her mask. I'm not 100% sure if that was the case. But Sekiguchi was not going to tolerate her at all. So she immediately attacked her right at the bell. But Pedita tried everything in her power to not lose to her until she finally applied a Kuma roll right onto her. One, two, three. She lost. So that means you have to wear a mask. I don't know why Sekiguchi had a problem with her wearing a mask, but let I me mean, look. I grew up watching mask wrestling as a kid, but I didn't see a problem with it. But it is what it is. Our next match, we have trios actions. We have Misa Kaguda from Just Tap Out. She teams up with uh, roster members from Marvelous, uh, Miyu Momono, Isuki Aoki. Now, they take on, of course, Seelene's homegrown girls from there. La Frescas de Ogaista, consistent of uh, Asuka, or as we know her, Veni, uh, Makoto, and Mima Shimoda, who we said has returned to wrestling. I thought it was a very interesting match, but however, it was La Fresca de Ogaistas who, in fact, were throwing a bit of the aggression and more of the attacks on their opponents. However, Misa Gagura, who I've seen uh, throwing a bit of the powerhouse into this match, as was very impressive, but however... Uh, this match, of course, uh, very, really interesting for me to watch because, you know, uh, La Fresco has proven their dominance in Seenly. So it ended with, of course, I'm not sure if, if what it, uh, it was a Michinoku driver on um, Kaguda by uh, Makoto. Uh, I don't know if Makoto ever learned a Michinoku driver from Taka Michinoku, but uh, it was an impressive win. So just like that. Now, this is one of two championship matches. We have the Beyond the Sea Tag Team titles. Uh, the challengers are is Maya Yuhiki and Suru Minatsu. Uh, they take on, of course, Ayame uh, Sazamura and, of course, Riko Ka uh, Kaijo are the champions. Now, a lot of the aggression is you've been seeing in this match comes from Suru Minatsu, who is trying to ensure to worn out her, her ch the champions in order to win the, the belts. However... Uh, one of Celine's uh, staff members serves as a VP and also a ref only when it comes to high speed. Was being attacked by Suru Minatsu. But uh, I have to say Kaiju and um, uh, Sazamura have always been an impressive team. I mean, they're originally from two different promotions. I mean, Kaiju is from the Celine promotion, but Sazamura is from um, 2AW. But I have to say they've always shown their impressiveness. But it was a uh, a sitting down power bomb by Riko Kaiju onto Suriminatsu to pick up the win in order to retain the title. So I have to say, I uh, haven't seen much of Sealing that much, but seeing what they did, very impressive. So I think they are really an impressive tag team in there. Now our main event. This is of course the Beyond the Sea Championship between Suri, who made her return to Japan. And now challenging for the title against Arisa Nakajima. Now, as I said before, she, uh, she hasn't been in this promotion. Let me pull up the information real quick about her. Because I know some of you may uh, probably have a lot of questions. But, so this is what I do know from, um, from her. She has been with, with Sealing for a short of time uh, between t uh, February of 2000. 
17, uh, she even uh, stopped being there until to, uh, September of 2000. So she was uh, there for a, a couple of months, but I highly doubt she's ever won any of the championships did with the promotion. Yeah, well, she has won championships in that promotion. Uh, she won the Beyond the Sea Tag Team titles with Yoshiko, who you guys remember from that shoot incident back in 2010 or so. But... 2015 or so, but it was great that she's been there, but she never held this title. Now, she has, as he probably asked me, why would she go back to this promotion if she was not originally from that? Well, th I think she may have some unfinished business at Seely, but I have to say it was a pretty good match, showing how Suri has evolved since leaving Japan, going to the U.S., and I think that's a good thing. But it was, of course, Suri who walked out as the winner. I don't know if, if she applied a T-bone suplex onto Nakajima to win the title. So I thought it was pretty impressive. So, um, but yeah. So I, I will, th uh, so I, th I, I think you guys should check it out for what it is. So I think that's pretty much it what we have for the ceiling. So let's move on with NXT. Okay, NXT. Now, it started out with the steel cage match between the Daya and the Creed Brothers. Now, if the Creed Brothers successfully defeat the Daya, then, then they are reinstated to NXT. However, the schism, most specifically Joe Gacy and Ava Reigns, would stop at nothing to ensure the Creed Brothers do not come back. So they played a smart game by attacking Brodus Creed, who was still outside of the ring before entering the steel cage, locking uh, Julius in the cage and they took Brodus in the back to ensure that this match falls into their favor however they did not count the how do I say not the desperation the will of the brothers now I have to say it was a fantastic story you look at the schism who would stop at nothing to ensure the Creed brothers do not come back but Bru but Julius oh my god he was able to hold on his own he, there was a moment where he had um Rip Fowler in a ankle lock and then Jagger Reed, he power bombed them with one hand. I'm like, Jesus. Now that is awesome. But of course, at some moment, Brodus shows up who's pissed the hell off. However, he was unable to enter the cage because Joe Gazy took the key to ensure he doesn't go in. But as I said before, Brodus was pissed off. He opened the damn door like if he was the incredible. Hulk. I don't think the diet anticipate this, but this led to, of course, Joe Gacy become nervous trying to guide the diet to do their jobs. But however, the Creed brothers, with their determination to come back, has never been so strong. They able to uh, to put both members of the diet out with a sliding lariat. One, two, three. They are back, leaving Ava Reigns in disgust and believing they thought they had everything under their full control so the obvious question does this means is the schism really falling is the root really burning we'll find out next week now as you know we have the family just chilling until they bump into carmelo hayes however they had a surprise visit with former nxt tag champions the street profits who decided to stop by so they had a little chit chat with Mello, but Mello was like, uh, not being a dick, but more like being much of a mature individual. But as soon as he left, uh, he left, Street Profits talked to the current NXT Tag Team Champions, and no, they did not challenge them. But they feel like they are, you know, saying, you know, we're on the street. You guys are now running the show. Yep, we are. But as soon as they were having a little good time talking to each other, all of a sudden, all hell broke loose in the women's locker room when, of course, Lola Vice, Electra Lopez got in a fight with Brooke, uh, Dana Brooke and J uh, Kalani Jordan. And, of course, Street Profits are like, everything's different. Like, they were all happy how things have changed. So I'm like, wow. Just like that. Now, as you know, I mentioned the NXT Global Heritage Invitational. That has already been announced. However, we just begun with that particular uh, matches. 
However, they did divide it with four, eight competitors divided in fours, group A and group B. However, we know Noam Dar, Dar and his compadres, the metaphor, will be watching. Now, our first match features Charlie Dempsey taking on Butch. I have to say, this was a very interesting match. Now, you probably will say that, you know, we have seen Charlie Dempsey, who has been very impressive putting people with submissions, but... Butch, he is beyond it. Now, their styles are almost similar in some capacity. I mean, he does throw in a bit of the... T Butch does throw in a bit of the technical, but also at the same time, a little bit like stuff like the striking or uh, st stuff like that, you know. But it has always been helpful. But however, him just bending the fingers, that's beyond it. But it was, of course, Charlie Dempsey, I mean, uh, Butch with the bitter end on to... Charlie Dempsey to win his first match. Now, the point system on this one is kind of like New Japan and uh, every promotion in Japan. If you win, you get two points. If you lose, you get zero. And if there is in a situation of a draw, they each get one point. So right now in the in the group A, we have Butch who's in the lead now. However, you know he's looking at Noam Dar, watching his every move. Now we do see a very interesting interview with Dragon Lee. Now. Dragon Lee, as you know, pinned Dominic Mysterio, which allow him to be perfectly that he could be chasing another opportunity for the North American title. However, Mustafa Ali, who has been chasing this belt, feels that, yay, you lost Dragon Lee against Dominic. That means I'm the one who has to face him. So basically, it, they're fighting who is going to be the one to challenge uh, Dominic Mysterio. But however... Of course, Dominic and Rhea Ripley were hearing this, and they posted out on Instagram or whatever they that they are paying attention. So they told that Dominic will allow them to have a number one contender with him being the special guest referee. You know Dominic does not want one of these guys. He would rather stay as a champion without challenging anybody, but somebody has to step up. So we'll see what happens, and that will take place next week. Now, Dragunov, as you know, he showed a lot of respect to Trick Williams, saying that he pushed him to the limits. But however, later it was interrupted by the so-called uh, metaphor getting in their way. So, of course, they were mocking him, saying, hey, you didn't win the NXT Championship. We know Dragunov will win that belt sooner or later. But, or Amensa decided to take her business, but of course... He will deal with Oro, uh, Oro Menza next week. And I'm sure, metaphor, you better be prepared what comes next because he may end up in the hospital. Now, as a result of what happened in Heat Wave, Von Wagner was supposed to be in the match against Baron, uh, Baron Corbin, but that match never happened. But, of course, Braun Breaker got involved. But, of course, uh, Von Wagner decided, you know what? Let's do this next week in a no disqualification match. So that's going to happen. But however, speaking of Braun Breaker, he had a little chit chat with Baron Corbin. Apparently, there's a bit of disagreement. Basically, Braun Breaker was saying that you should appreciate that I saved your life. But Braun Breaker, but Baron Corbin doesn't see it that way. So basically, a little bit of the appreciation became into like, I didn't ask for your help, that sort of thing. But I wouldn't be surprised if some things happen next week between those two if Baron Corbin decides to get involved I don't know we'll see now to result what we saw earlier in the day Lola Vice and Electro Lopez tank take on uh Kelani Jordan and Dana Brooke it was a bit of a violent match but a uh, smart move was to isolate uh Dana Brooke but didn't let Kelani to be distracted long enough for uh uh, Electro Lopez to pick up Kalani and give Lola Vice a roundhouse kick to pick up the win. So they walk out as the victors. But, of course, there are those who believe that maybe she, they will be the next competitors to bring back the NXT Women's Tag Team titles. Now, after the results of what happened last week uh, with both Trick, Mello and, Trick Williams and, Mel and Carmelo Hayes, now it seems like the friendship is starting to show a little bit of, how to say, dissolve or deteriorate. So things are not looking good. So you can call it like it's trouble in paradise. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Trick Williams 
turns his back on Melo. That's the thing. So we'll see what happens. Now our next match, we have Dijak versus Eddie Thorpe. Now Dijak, who calls himself the so-called Justice, decides to give justice to those who he sees unfit or whatever. Eddie Thorpe wants to have another shot with him. And of course, Dijak got away with it by using the belt in his favor to ensure the ref didn't see a thing. And then, just like that, Dijak won. So, giving him the win. But you know that Eddie Thorpe is not going to let this slide. Now, it appears that both Angel Garza and Humberto Carrillo are having the same dream. So, it looks more like their family bloodline is now united. And they're trying to remember everything that their father grandfather had taught them if you guys know this these guys are second gen third generation wrestlers so they're following in the family footsteps so we'll see they announced that they will be back uh into nxc next week uh of course they paid a little smart tribute a small tribute to bray wyatt i think it was pretty great and of course everybody pulled out their cell phones and do the fireflies and there was the chair the rocking chair out at the sta staging area. I thought it was pretty nice. Uh, I know a lot of fans are still hurt with the sudden loss of Bray Wyatt. I'm sure everybody in the NXT and the main roster are hurt too. But I have to say it was a pretty good proper way to do a tribute right there. Now, our next match is the N Group B of the NXT Global Heritage Invitational. We have Joe Coffey versus Nathan Frazier. Now, if you guys saw what happened, there was like a bit of a botch. Uh, come, well, it wasn't caused by Nathan Frazier. I think there was a mistake. He accidentally got caught his neck into the ring ropes. Could I don't know if it played out any part of it to put him away. But, uh, of course, um, it did let for uh, Joe Coffey with the Festa Bell onto Nathan Frazier to win. But, of course, Noam Dar is watching closely. So, if I was you, Metaphor, don't mock the Gallows Boys. Now, as you know, Chase, you are still um, doing her thing. Um, nobody knows what the hell went to ever since she's been upset with Andre Chase. However, uh, Andre Chase decided to announce that Duke Hudson will be in the Global Heritage Invitational Tournament. And, of course, he had to lay out the rules, but Duke Hudson's like, what? So he had to write this down and everything else. And, of course, look who showed up late. The hell showed up. So it seems like uh, she's been acting up, but recently she's been hanging out with Jay-Z Jane, hanging out with, with the wrong crowd. I wouldn't be surprised if, of course, um, Andre Chase gets a new girl to join the, the, the class, but we'll see what happens. Now, once again, NXT Anonymous has struck again. F Fallon Henley decided to speak to uh, Miles Bourne, who's been more of a servant to Gulak, um, Dempsey, and Kemp, asking Miles Bourne if she would like to be their third partner. So, Miles Bourne was, like, convinced completely. Now, I don't know what Kemp, Dempsey, or was this, or Gulak would think of this, but I'm sure they're not going to be extre extremely happy about it. But, we'll see. Now, our main event is the... N um, the NXT Women's Title Number One Contendership. We have Roxanne Perez, the former champion, uh, versus Gigi Dolan versus Kiana James versus Blair Davenport. Now you know Tiffany Strand will be watching this closely, but the obvious question: Who will want this more? Now I know many fans would probably wanted um, uh, Roxanne Perez, but unfortunately that did not go well. Uh, Kiana James was the one who picked up the win by applying like this one move. I don't know what they call it, but she became the number one contender, and she, in fact, uh, is sending a direct message. So that match will take place next week, so we'll see how that turns out. Now, um, before anything else, there was a thing that I skipped that I did not wrote down on my notes here. Wesley put out a video on Instagram um, telling, make, uh, checking in with everybody, saying that he's okay. Um... He said he's already done with Hayes, but he did say that he, one day he will go for the NXT title. But of course, that's only a matter of time. But as soon as that happened, uh, but later, as soon as the ma ma uh, main event was over, 
uh, Wesley just went into the office. I'm going to presume that's Shawn Michaels' office to have a little chat with him. I don't know what it is about, but hopefully next week it could tell us. Uh, I think that's pretty much it with NXT, so let's move on with some news updates. As you know, Tam Nakano had a very impressive match not too long ago against a uh, in a trios match. Her, Natsupo, and, Sur- and Sayori Onoi taking on Azuki, um, Takako, uh, Takako, uh, Takako Inoi, and of course uh, this person named uh, Shino- Shinobu Kandori in a six women tag match. In recent time, um, Shinobu had some remarks towards stardom or something, I don't know. And Tam took offense to it, so it looks more like she wants to have to have a challenge against her. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, she did state it, this on an interview with Tokyo Sports, that uh, she's eager to face um, Shinobu Kandori, but she says she's aimed to win the Women's Wrestling Grand Prize. So basically she wants to challenge those who have been above her, you know, who have been the best in their times. Like, sort of like first, she, I will beat Iwatani, Julia, Utami, and Sudi. Next, I want Nanane Takashi, Kyoko Inoue, and others for the red belt. So basically, so basically, she wants to challenge the one, like the veterans and the ones who are in this timing. Now, we know she has beaten Julia a few times. Um, Utami, Sudi, and and you are the only ones I haven't seen that she hasn't beaten yet but we'll see now interesting news coming from Kyrie. now recently there was been the reported by scott edwards saying that she had a little sit down with none other than rossi ogawa now the significance of the sit down was about discussing her final match in stardom now she did stated that she wants to have one last match in stardom but she wants to face um a homegrown girl from stardom now Some you may try to, how do I say this in some words, uh, try to say who would that be. Now, we can say Julia out because she is not a a homegrown. Neither is Micah. uh, Tam, she's not a homegrown either. Um, Who else? I mean, there's plenty others that that I'm trying to remember. Oh, yeah, Mina's one of them who's uh, who's not a homegrown. But... For me, I can think of a few, but the one who I would like um, for the challenge is Hanan. Uh, some of you may ask me, why would I want Hanan? Simple. Hanan has grown up so much. I mean, she has improved so much on her on her craft and all this, and she became like... And, of course, people are calling her the future ace of stardom. But also, there's a deep connection between Hanan and Kairi. Now, those who don't know this or not, the reason that Hanan and her sisters are in stardom is because of Kairi. Kairi was the one who got them. Kairi knows Hanan and her sisters when they were younger. So I would say it would be a proper way if that is to book. Now, Rossi Ogawa is a smart man. I'm sure he would think that. But I'm sure he'll think of something when we get there. Now, as you know, that Kairi it will be taking a, a, a hiatus by the end of September. Amongst the matches that were announced, other than her being in, um, in all Japan and Seedling, she was announced to be in Gleet on September 20th. However, the ma- indication of the match she was been was not been foretold until today. Uh, she will be teaming with, um, of course, her tag partner in stardom, Nanane Takahashi, and they team up with uh, Gleet's homegirl, um, Yukari Hosokawa. They take on Kurumi Harige from prominence they take on um diamond egoist um Mich- um michiko and janai kai so that's going to be an interesting match to hear now you guys may have heard news about brian pillman jr that he has uh, officially signed with uh wwe and it's just been revealed by fightful select that he will be making his debut uh next week in nxt so that's going to be great to see now for uh, GCW, for Say You Will, that took place this coming Friday, 
uh, John Wayne Murdoch will be in action to take on Swoggle. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see. So, <laughs> but yeah. And finally, for our last update, I want to give a happy anniversary to Yoshi wrestler Mari. If you guys don't know who Mari is, she's from the promotion Atlas Girls. She looks more like, uh, kind of like one of those Mortal Kombat characters with, uh, her, like Katana or Milani or Jade. That's her. She's one of my absolute favorites to watch in Atlas Girls. But I haven't watched Atlas Girls for a long time, but I do follow her on her social media. So, happy anniversary. I uh, don't know how long she's been wrestling, but, um, just put it out there if you guys are big fans of her. And I think that's pretty much it what we have. So... I think that, so let's just uh, call it a day. Well, I hope everybody enjoys this episode. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm only doing two reviews. I'll give you guys the real reasons why. Um, I went to L.A. to accompany my dad, who is, in fact, um, well, here's the thing. My dad is not a U.S. citizen, but he does have a green card here in the United States. He's been working here for a long time. However, his Costa Rican passport was um, expired, so he, it about a year ago, but apparently he did not have the necessary time to get it redone as soon as it was expired. But however, he was procrastinating a lot. My mom had to tell him to get it done. So we were able, to, he was able to get it done uh, about a month ago. He went to LA with my mom to get to reapply for his passport. However, I accompany him to do uh, some other things. Uh, but yeah, that's why I was only able to do two reviews because the problem is I left here in my hometown of San Diego around 7 in the morning, uh, made a pit stop at some place to get breakfast along uh, up north from here, and of course made our way straight to L.A. Uh, to the, the Costa Rican consulate. And as soon as that happened, we were there to do a few things. We were able, my dad had to do some things in order to get his passport taken care of. So that's the reason we only, I only did two. But the drive from here to, from L.A. to uh, back is longer. We uh, we left around maybe close to one. And we didn't got back home. I didn't got back here till what, possibly four. So that kind of shortened my the timeline for me. So that's the reason you, I only did uh, these two uh, reviews, because when I I thought that I was gonna do uh, NW Power, but because they put there was gonna be free matches from NW seventy four, I didn't think there was no need for me to do that since I reviewed uh, NW seventy five, but I I thought it was great. So I decided you know let's throw in seed and see how that goes. But don't forget. Uh, for Wednesday, we do have AEW Dynamite. I haven't decided if the, if there's anything else. I know there's still some Stardom shows that I haven't seen yet. There's this recent Tokyo Issue Pro Wrestling. I haven't seen either this past weekend and a few others. Uh, I decided not to watch the rest of the GCWs because I'm going to waste time with those. Just focus on try to focus on the ones we can do as possible. I know they've been currently on tour, but we'll see how that's, how that plays out as well. Uh, I will be also doing my podcast if you guys have me on so you guys can find me on Spotify if you're interested um, is DWZ podcast with J Rod so you will find me there I'll be normally doing the podcast every once a week either on a Wednesday or on Thursday depending if I'm available so we'll see how that turns around so for now I will see you guys in the next DWZ time same DWZ channel I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day.